Yes, indeed, the oldest US president ever has now announced he wants to be an even older president. Joe Biden, 80 years old already, wants to run for another four years as president next year's election. Now, he made that announcement in a three-minute video, which is probably wise, seeing how vague he is. And he said he wanted to, uh, later in the speech, he wanted to fight other Americans. Freedom. Personal freedom is fundamental to who we are as Americans. There's nothing more important, nothing more sacred. But you know, around the country, MAGA extremists are lining up to take on those bedrock freedoms. Yeah, you've got to fight those wicked Trump lovers. I mean, really. So joining me is Rick Gates, who was a deputy chair of Donald Trump's first and successful campaign to become president. Good to see you, uh, Rick Gates. Uh, Joe Biden picked a strange way to announce he was running again, and not with a speech, but with a three-minute video. Now, why was that? Andrew, great to see you again. Yeah, it's very unusual. It's uh, certainly different from running his campaign out of a basement as he did in 2020. So I think the, uh, you know, the, the Biden campaign wants to make sure that they're able to control as much of what he says as possible uh, for fear of mistakes or gaffes or any other thing that might derail, you know, this initial launch. But to announce a formal campaign with a video is uh, very um, uh, different than most of the other candidates did it. Certainly, as you saw, Donald Trump, Nikki Haley, uh, Mike Pence, many others, they typically use a rally uh, and to really generate a lot of enthusiasm behind it. Certainly, Biden did not accomplish that today. I guess it's trying for the, uh, you know, low drama, no risks approach. What struck you about the video? I mean, uh, looking at it, it seemed to me he was trying to pitch that there's a certain part of America that's an enemy of the other part. Uh, I mean, it's quite negative in that regard. Uh, it's almost like he's picking up on Hillary Clinton's deplorables, but saying, well, they're actually MAGA extremists and they're coming for your freedom. Is that an effective pitch? Well, it's not. It's effective at the beginning when you're trying to galvanize your base, which is exactly what he's trying to do in this video. But as we've seen in the 2022 midterm elections, that certainly didn't work for the Democrats very well. And in fact, it really cast a shadow of doubt on Biden because he was really attempting to talk about unification of the country and saying that we need to put our differences aside and come to consensus. And this flies in the very face of it. I thought there are two other unique instances in this video today. Uh, the first is the number of times that Kamala Harris appeared uh, in the video. There's been a lot of discussion about that. She is viewed as, as a fairly incompetent vice president with uh, not much uh, being achieved. And so part of the campaign strategy is going to have to instill a bit of confidence in the American voters that, that Kamala is qualified to do the job, uh, which even Democrats at this moment in time would say that she's not. And I'd say that the, the other thing that Biden did not do in his video, he talks about finishing the job, but he didn't talk about any of his accomplishments or what that job is. And even Democrats noticed that today. That was a big missing piece. Obviously, they hope to, I think, um, rectify that situation as the campaign unfolds. But that was a major, I think, uh, oversight on the Biden campaign's part, not to even talk about what he's achieved in the last two years. Now, at this stage... Uh, the, you know, the way we're both talking, uh, certainly, you know, it's looking like voters are going to get a rerun of the last election. Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. Now, Trump lost the last one. And now Joe Biden has the advantage of being the incumbent president. So how do you think it's all going to play out? Well, it's a great question. Typically, incumbency is an asset. It's an advantage. But historically, in the U.S. presidential cycles, if you don't have an approval rating of close to 50 percent, uh, then incumbency doesn't really help you a lot. And that's exactly where Donald Trump was in 2020. And that's exactly where Joe Biden is right now. So if you look at the picture today, Biden is a lot of trouble. The power of incumbency is not going to help him. Uh, it'll be very uh, you know, easy for Donald Trump to define Biden because he's the one that's been making the decisions just as Biden did that in 2020 with Trump making the decision. So now the tables are turned a little bit, and it's certainly going to be, uh, you know, interesting. But with Biden's approval rating where it is right now, he is uh, in, in severe jeopardy of, of really trying to get his campaign launched and really defining how he's going to lead the country for another four years. 
but the thing is, of course, uh, I agree, Joe Biden has been struggling. On the other hand, your analysis, you know, if Trump's going to win, he also has to be a little bit more popular than he was last time. I'm not sure that's the case. There's been a lot of paint taken off him in the last couple of years. Well, and this is why I say the importance of the independent and moderates. Uh, I don't think people understand uh, the, the the impact that they're going to have yet. It'll roll. It'll be defined as the campaigns roll out. But at the end of the day, it's easy for each candidate to kind of, you know, you know, really gravitate toward their base, galvanize them, put energy into them. But as to your point, there are issues with Donald Trump. There are many issues with Joe Biden. And, and the moderates seem to be the ones that are going to have to make that tough decision about who they're going to support and why. And when you start looking at the important issues in our country, uh, obviously, it's no secret that the economy, inflation, uh, you know, quality of life is number one right now. And uh, if that holds, then that's really going to be uh, bad news for Biden, because he's really going to have to come around and uh, create an economic plan that'll work. And so far, obviously, that's the one area even Democrats uh, are very much against Biden, that he hasn't done a good job uh, in that uh, key policy issue. But Rick Gates, what does it say about America that the two people most likely to be battling it out, because they've still got to go through the formal nomination process, uh, will be... Uh, uh, they're battling it out to be president. One is aged 80 and the other 76. <laughs> Yeah, one of the things that you see from a lot of the uh, Republican candidates, presidential candidates, and others that are intending to run, they have started generating a narrative about a new generation of leaders. The only reason the Democrats aren't doing it, even though a lot of them believe it, is because Joe Biden's the incumbent. And so there's going to be less talk on that side. But at the end of the day, there is absolutely a large percentage of Americans that want to see the next generation of leaders step up. The problem is that both of these leaders, Joe Biden and, and Donald Trump, have a grip on their bases at the moment. And so you're, you're not going to see a lot of dramatic change. And so people are going to have to ultimately swallow the idea that you will absolutely have somebody over the age of 80 uh, in office next time. And that calls into a whole host of questions um, as the uh, world has been able to witness firsthand, particularly with Joe Biden's uh, mistakes along the way. And finally, Rick Gates, what's your tip? Uh, as, as it stands at the moment, lots can change. Trump, Biden, who would win the election? Yeah, Andrew, if the vote were taken today, there's no question that Donald Trump would win it. Uh, internal polls on both sides show uh, Biden in a very, very difficult position. Trump has the edge by about four or five points. Uh, and a lot of that's related to the economy. And as I said earlier, that is exactly the issue uh, that, uh, you know, Biden needs to overcome. He needs to figure out a way to solve it because the majority of American people, including Democrats, are very upset and frustrated by the way that he has dealt with that. And a lot of Americans believe that we are still heading for a recession. That will impact them during the time of the election. Obviously, Biden has a little bit of time to come back. But if the vote were held today, Donald Trump would actually win the election. Well, there you go. I, I wouldn't have tipped it a, a year or two uh, ago, but uh, amazing things can happen. Uh, Rick Gates, thank you so much indeed for your analysis.